All right, hello, welcome back to the podcast. Once again, everybody, PayPal and Patreon links are both down below for anybody who wants to support me. Only do so if you actually can. So, another month has gone by. Thus, it is time for the U.S. monthly drought update. As the drought is still ever persistent in the U.S. Southwest. So, starting off as per usual with the two mega reservoirs, Lake Mead and Lake Powell along the Colorado River both serving as excess storage reservoirs to release extra water along the river in order to keep the river flow adequate whenever it would otherwise not be so on its own, a condition which is basically perpetual now, or has been for the last two, two and a half decades or so. And so although, like most lakes and reservoirs, they have seasonal cycles throughout the year where they lose more or regain more water, they have, overall, incurred net losses each year, with the exception of a few years where there have been high amounts of precipitation. But even in those cases, as you can see, all high precipitation years really do is just stall the decline. And while one might assume that the Colorado River and Lake Mead and Lake Powell along with it just supply the middle of an empty desert along with Las Vegas, that is not actually the case. That water is distributed away from the river at certain points along different systems, particularly the huge chunk of it being siphoned off along the Colorado River aqueduct over into California. So when we reach the point that Lake Mead and Lake Powell can no longer release extra water to keep the Colorado River water flow level adequate, that's going to cause far greater problems than just supply issues for Las Vegas and some desert towns. It's going to also cripple Arizona agriculture, of which there actually is a lot going on in the middle of a desert, and is also going to pull the rug out from California's agriculture. So, looking at the numbers themselves, where are we at? Lake Mead, during the major depletion cycle of this year, which is just about over, has fallen from 1,067 elevation feet down to just under 1,042 as the U.S. lake system is measured by elevation feet or how high the surface of the water is above sea level. So that's not the depth of the lake. For reference though, at full, Lake Mead would be up at about 1225. At empty, it would be down at about 890. However, it's not an even drop, remember, because these aren't rectangular swimming pools, they're flooded canyons, so it gets narrower and narrower the further down you go, and thus each foot of water level further down, it contains less water, less volume than the foot above it did. So the further down you go, the faster you go down. And like I said, this depletion phase of this year, Lake Mead has dropped from 1067 down to just under 1042 as of the moment, representing a drop from having started off at 34% full and now being down to only 27% full. And how long until we lose the power generation from Lake Mead? As remember, to generate power, the water has to go through a gravity drop down through the turbines in the dam. So the intake for the turbines is not at the bottom. For Lake Mead, it is down at around 950 elevation feet, with again Lake Mead currently being down to about 1042. For Lake Powell, further up the Colorado River, the intake levels are at around 3490, and Lake Powell at its lowest point this year so far, several weeks back, was already down to 3522. It was able to replenish some water up to 3540, however now it's resumed declining and is heading down towards 3539. In percentage-wise, that translates to it was down to under 24%, got back up to 265 and is now down to 26.3 and dropping. And that boost to Lake Powell's water level, primarily coming from releasing additional water from Lake Mead, more than otherwise would have been released, in order to avoid releasing some from Lake Powell, thus allowing some buildup, as reservoirs, particularly Flaming Gorge, further up the river from Lake Powell, were sort of sacrificed in order to provide a water level surge. In Arizona, particularly Phoenix, as Phoenix basically is all of Arizona's population and contains the major industries, many of which, like semiconductor foundries, are very water intensive and also contains agriculture in the surrounding area in the middle of a desert. Phoenix is supplied by a number of surrounding reservoirs and they're measured on a collective total percent full. This year so far, 
They started off the decline back in spring at around 72% full collectively and gradually dropped down to 70 by the start of summer. Now the drop has been steeper over the last month and a half, dropping from 70 down to now 64% full collectively. Utah statewide maintains a similar system, a collective total percent full across their various reservoirs. Last year's drop was pretty steep. They went all the way down to a collective 39% full, and their replenishment over the winter and up till the start of summer this year brought them back up to 46.5. And now for the past couple weeks, they have begun dropping down for this year, and so far at least have only dropped down to about 44%. But the likelihood of them dropping down to and past last year's 39 is pretty high. California has an interconnected aqueduct and distribution system, particularly focused on moving water from the larger reservoirs in the north down to the central and south portions of the state. California's largest reservoir, Lake Shasta, last year declined from 980 elevation feet all the way down to 880. And over the replenishment phase up to earlier this year, they recovered up to about 946 or 947. So coming up about 35 feet short from which now they have begun declining this year, although slower than last year, and are down to between 941 and 942, representing a drop so far from 40% full to 38.3. The state's second biggest reservoir, Lake Trinity, declined last year from 2,280 elevation feet down to 2,210, recovered back up only into the 2,230s, and so far this year has dropped down to 2,217, representing a drop this year so far from 30.6 down to 28.5%. Lake Orville last year took a steep drop from 730 down to 630 in elevation feet, and the dam actually had to shut down its power generation. However, it actually recovered more than what it lost over the replenishment cycle, got all the way back up into the 770s, now, however, it's on its drop for this year and is down to between 741 and 742, representing it having recovered up to 54.8% and now so far having dropped back down to 45.3% as of this recording. New Malone's last year dropped from 1,010 elevation feet down to about 920, only recovered up to about 940, and this year so far, has dropped under 920, under 910 even, and is on its way down under 906 towards 905, representing it having recovered up to 37.5, but now having declined thus far this year down to only 31.5% full. And the San Luis Reservoir got really low last year, down to only 9% full. However, it was replenished by a significant amount and got back up to, in elevation feet, 447 about, or up to 450, and so far this year has now dropped down to 424, representing over the last month or so a drop from 42 down to 35%. And down in the San Joaquin Valley, a, or at least normally, a decent amount of water is usually drawn from the San Joaquin River, However, the San Joaquin River is not doing all that great. In fact, it is doing so not great that at present it is down at only about 5% of its usual flow rate. Yes, you heard that correctly. As during this time of the year, normally histor on historical average, it would have a flow rate of about 400 cubic feet per second. And it is all the way down at only about 20 cubic feet per second at the moment. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to at least. There's dozens of other episodes about all kinds of other imperative issues you can check out. You can support me through PayPal, Patreon if you want. Just only do so if you actually can. Go sub to my cat as well. She has her own channel with much less depressing content. But no matter what happens to me, may God bless and protect you all, and I will see you all around next time.